Well, it could be the longest car repair job in history. Jeff dropped his beloved vintage Holden off to Mark six years ago, and it's still not finished. To make matters worse, it's now a wreck. This is a state it's in. It was a fully working car when I dropped it off, sir. So. It's the moment an angry customer confronts the man who's been restoring his car for six years. I'm upset that it come to this, mate. Like, well, I am too. Now I'm left with this. It's going to cost me twice as much to get done now because it's half done. And there'll be bits missing for sure that weren't missing. I look at the, how everything's just shoved in it. I was in shock that that's where my car was after the amount of money I'd paid him. This is what Jeff Kelly's prized 1966 HR Holden looks like before repairs started. This is what it looks like when he found it. When I was younger, all my mates could afford to do up old cars and I couldn't, and this was me finally achieving that goal of getting the car I wanted. Guys trashed my dream, I guess. Mark, Mark Rasmussen. Chris Allen from A Current Affair, Mark, just wondering if you, we can ask you some questions about what happened to Jeff Kelly's car. Mark Rasmussen is the one who agreed to restore Jeff's Holden. So this is his car? No. It's, it's in limbo. It's in, it's in a civil case at the moment. Well, quite clearly, it belongs to him. He gave it to you six years ago to restore and he says you haven't done it. You've well, taken it to pieces. That's for, that's for us to sort out in the court. I'm seeing my car here, but I don't think anything's been done, really. Oh, no, I've just been sitting on my ass. Well, it's been six years, mate. Well, the agreement was for $10,000 for him to remove and replace and respray the car. Jeff says a friend recommended panel beater Mark Rasmussen to restore his Holden. Jeff tells us he paid Mark $7,000 by bank transfer and $2,000 in cash. It's only really cost me the nine green that I've paid him, but it's cost me a lot mentally and physically, that's for sure. When we caught up with him, Mr Rasmussen at first says Jeff only paid $4,000, but then changed his mind. So you're saying he didn't pay you any money in cash, as he to has told us? No, well, oh, that I, I... No. Not that I know, but he may have. I don't know. I'm not, I won't, you know, I'm not going to debate that, so... Well, either you know or you don't know whether he paid you. Yeah. Well, he may have it, it, probably once or twice that I know of, and that would be about the limit. So if he said he, he paid me all up about $5,000, that would be about it. There's still another 5000 out, uh, outstanding. On top of that, Mr Rasmussen is also claiming Jeff needs to now pay him $3,000 in storage costs. And he says you're demanding now he pays storage fees. Well, that's only, well, because, that's that's only because of the way he's carrying on. Told me I'd get a service that I haven't received, and now he's holding me to ransom to get my car back. By now, you're probably wondering why this all dragged on for six years. Well, initially, Jeff says, Mark Rasmussen called him and said he'd become seriously ill and would need time to recover. Then Jeff had to move from Brisbane to Newcastle for work and could only contact the car restorer by phone. Worse still, Jeff says Mr Rasmussen moved his car to another location and didn't tell him where it was for four years. He didn't even notify me he was moving the car. Well, he says for four years you kept his car and didn't tell him where it was until he found it in January. No, that's no, a lot of crap. He, he sends people was... around to, to take photos of him. It's just full harassment. My biggest frustration's been you're not giving me an address to come and see the car. And... Jeff says he finally found Mr Rasmussen's address in January and filmed what happened on his phone. It's basically a wreck, a full resto now, and... You know, that's where it was meant to be. It was meant to be finished, painted, we spoke about put back together. We spoke for X amount of dollars. Yeah, 10 Gentleman's green. Gentleman's agreement. It's always important, if you're ever going to have an agreement for any form of business transaction and the repair or the restoration of a car is a business transaction, then that agreement should be in writing. There is just no question about it. Solicitor Richard Mitry says this case proves the need to do things by the book. If he'd gone to a licensed panel beater straight away and had a written contract and a written authority for the car to be pulled apart, there's a good chance that he would have not ended up in this situation. Do you want the car or not? Yeah, 100%. Right, good. So when can I pick it up we'll back together? As soon as I can, within the next two or three weeks. As you heard there, Mr Rasmussen agrees to repair Jeff's car, but yeah, Jeff yeah. says when he comes back two weeks later, the Holden is still in pieces and he finds Mr Rasmussen is at his neighbour's house. 
any chance you could ask him if he'll come out and talk to me. Oh, mate, you go over there, wait over there. Take it off my place. Yeah. And then he can get home. No worries, mate. Appreciate it, Tom. Right. Thanks. So they've basically refused to come out. Anything you'd like to say to Jeff? Nothing. Nothing? No. Well, talk to my solicitor. My, my solicitor's handling it. I'd like to see my car finished, but I can't ever see that happening with Mark. Well, how would you describe the way he's behaving? Go away. I don't want to right, know you, you. See you later. Look, thank you. Oh, it's been pretty traumatic. It's had a pretty big impact on my wellbeing. Jeff says he's now taken his case to police who are investigating.